want to say, well, how can God change his mind? He said, I'm a God that changed not. You don't understand that. So don't quote it. That's right. Imagine you throwing Bible at God. That's what the devil did. That's yeah. right. He threw Bible at the Son of God. Then the Son of God came and put the Bible in the right place. And whenever God said something, if you can change your mind, what makes you think it's impossible for God to change his? That's right. Is that Bible? Why, certainly. Certainly. God ordained that he would destroy Nineveh, didn't he? That's right. Changed his mind when Nineveh went down in sackcloth and in ashes. That's right. Fasting and praying. Yeah. Changed his mind because what they done came up towards God. And God saw their works. Listen. In Jonah chapter 3 and verse 10. God saw their works. That they turned from their evil works. That they, wait a minute. What turned God? They turned from their evil the way. The thing that turned God was because the people they turned. God saw their works. God saw their works. That they turned. They changed. From their evil way. From their evil way. And God repented of the evil. Yeah. God repented. God repented. In other words, changed his mind. Yeah. That's right. He repented of the evil. That he had said that he would do he unto them. He said he will do to them. And he did it not. Ha! Amen. Apostle Paul said, I set all things in order when I come. This book is not ordinary, it's extraordinary. There's a lot of mysteries in here. There are things in the scriptures that is not necessarily in chronologically in order. Right. You can take one verse and the sentence can be talking about the past. The next sentence can talk about the present and the next sentence can talk about future. Yes. Right. Literally in one verse. Sometimes the Bible talks in symbolic terms. Like in the book of Revelation, talk about the great whore yeah. and how the kings drank from the cup of her fornication. Whoever heard of fornication in a cup? Mm -hmm. Now, now do you get me? Symbolic. Brother read the scripture that I'm going to dive into. Mm. And he error. The first error was taking matter in your own hands to put out something. Right then you were disobedient to what God instructed. Because God says lean not to thine own understanding. And when God don't move on you to put something out and you put it out, that's biblical transgression. That's right. None of the prophets, yeah, here, yeah, here. Yeah. None of the apostles spoke by their own permission. That's right. This is why God have it in the scriptures. The prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. You see, when you put something out based upon your feeling, you transgress. Knowing this first. Because that's your own will. That's right. And God said he wants you to know something first. First. Second thing. Before you react. That's right. God wants you to know this first. Knowing this first. On all you ministers. I don't care how much you feel as though God is using you. <laughs> that's right. I don't care how many voices you hear. That's right. This book guides the church. That's right. The contents of this book guides the church. That's right. The contents of this book governs the body, just like your brain. Governs the function of your physical body. God is the brain of the 
up the church. That's right. Hear me good. Go ahead, brother. And the eternal, everlasting mind of God that's flawless uh -huh. have spoken. That's right. And he have put some of his thoughts in book form. The Bible is not all of God's thoughts because the Bible is too small. Amen. There are secret things that belong to God. to God. And there are many things in the Bible that still have to be opened up. That's right. Still have to be explained. Still have to be interpreted and broken down. That's right. Because the Bible is full of mysteries. mysteries. All of them time we are over there yes they can't see it so God would allow something to happen St. John chapter 2 and verse 17 so you can see yourself and his disciples remember yeah, that's what I want you to do that's right Glory to God, remember. And his disciples and his remember followers remember that it was written. It was written. The zeal of thine house. That, wait a minute. Not the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform it. The zeal of thine house. But the zeal of your house has eaten me up. The zeal of your house is broader than the zeal of your residence. Yeah. Right. The zeal of your house is the zeal of your body. The zeal of your body is the zeal of your temple. The zeal of your temple is the zeal of your earthly tabernacle. That's right. Anytime you admit that it's not from God, but something is pressing you and you go out and say it anyway, you're overzealous. Overzealous. I'm not sending to be your friend at all. At all. I'm sent to preach the word of God to keep you out of hell. That's right. That's my job. That's right. That's right. So God will allow things to happen to challenge your humility. Yes, he will. Oh, yeah. God will allow things to happen to challenge your humility and challenge your ability to submit to what God says. That's right. Uh, no minister should come to me, Pastor Jennings. This is the way I see it, because I'm telling you before anybody comes, I don't care how anybody see nothing but God. That's right. How plain can I make it?